The salvation cry is for you and your household. God is a God who bonds himself to his people and he binds us together in that love and in that grace. And for the church to be able to be triumphant today, we can't be triumphant simply because we understand intellectually. The church cannot be triumphant simply because we have a moral commitment or we have a desire to do that which is pleasing in God in ministry. The church is going to be that victorious people because of a miracle that can't be expressed in words. It's spirit and it's river and it's flowing. It causes the heart of people to reach out to each other. Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples, in that you are bonded together, in that you have love one toward another. I didn't write the passage of scripture. It's nothing that originates with me. It's not my intent nor my desire, but it's the will of God. He's the one who's declared it and let God speak and let every man listen. God said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples in that you have love for me. Yes, but more than that, he declares in that you have love one toward another. Love is a wonderful thing. It's not an emotion alone. Love's a wonderful thing. It's not a moral act of greatness that we do. Love is something that happens because it's planted by God. It's nothing that we reach for, but it's something that reaches toward us. It's not merely our desire to achieve, our desire to gain somebody, bring a person into our life that we think is attractive, bring somebody into our life that we think is strong, bring somebody into our life that we think is clever. No, the bonding process is not that which is divided in these kind of lines, but the bonding press, uh, work happens because of knowledge and relationship. We get to know people, and some people we get to know aren't the best in the world, yet we become bonded to them. Many a woman's been bonded to a man who has not been good for her, has not shown love nor kindness, but after he's walked away and been gone a year, she still thinks about him and perhaps walks back into the living room, and before she knows it, she's all, almost ready to ask him something, and she remembers he's been gone, he's been gone a year but she's still bonded to him. And when it's time for shopping, without realizing it, she turns to the counter with socks like she would have bought before. Why? Because he's gotten into her heart. He's gotten into her spirit. He's gotten into her dream. She's bonded to him. And he's the hardest thing in the world to get out of her system, even after he's rejected her. Why? Because there's something of bonding that happens in life. I don't think that I can define it. I don't think that I can explain it, but I believe that I can witness it and recognize it, that God is a God that brings people together. God is a God that brings us together close. And when we don't have a bonding uh, thing happening among us, when there's not the work of bonding, it probably is because we have a form of godliness that denies God's power. We have a way of religion that's distorted. God's plan always brings people together. He's a reconciling God. He brings people to himself and he brings people to each other. And when this does not happen, we find that the scripture is fulfilled that says, a people who are self-centered, a people who do not have natural affection. And I think one of the hardest things to see today and feel the pain of it, of recognizing that there's people that go into marriage who have not natural affection. Oh, they worship the body, and they're interested in all of the beauty that might be a part of flesh, but they can walk out of a marriage as soon as they desire, as soon as it loses its interest. Why? Because they have not natural affection. They have never experienced God's bonding power working between them and someone else. It happens not only in the thoughts of marriage, there's people that are able to work together, spend time together, laugh together, and have all the things that happen together. And one person leaves and goes to another city or moves across to another department, and the person never misses them. Why? Because they don't have natural affection. God has a spiritual affection that ought to work in our lives. And I say today, out of a sincere heart, that I'm afraid that we become ungodly when we're able to walk away from somebody and never care, 
I believe that we're ungodly when we can move away from our children and never look back and wonder what's happening. When we're able to move away from a wife or a husband and never feel concerned there's something drastically wrong. And when we're able to be in the body of Christ and find that we worship together and there's never been a need for bonding. God help us. We have a form of godliness that denies his spirit and his power because God will bring us into unity. He demands it. He craves it. He cries for it. He reproduces it. He causes it to be manifest. And when people are touched by the spirit of God, they're drawn together. When people are touched by the Spirit of God, they want to see each other. When people are touched by the Spirit of God, they desire to help each other. It's not a religious thing that we're doing, which is some form of duty, but it's the Spirit of God that knows how to bond people together. I hate what happens in our society. I hate what happens in our churches. I hate what I fear happens inside of all of us, including myself. The ability to be quite content all by ourselves. And I think that if we're not careful that we go through life trying to build the kind of strength and resources until we can escape the fear of having nobody, being able to say, I can make it with nobody at all. I can make it without any relationship. As long as I have me, I can be satisfied. As long as I have me, I can be content. I need one person, it's me. And I will be my own friend. I need one person and it's me. I will be my own companion. I need only one person, it's me. I will be my own strength. I will have one person, it will be me. And I will have my own wisdom. And when I want to impress somebody, I'll talk to them. And if I want to show off, I will speak to somebody else. And if I need somebody to do something for me, I'll con them. But I've been able to escape from the need of bonding, and I've bonded myself only to myself. You'd be amazed at how many people have fallen into this snare. They've come to the place where that they have finally freed themselves from the fear of what other people think. And as long as they're able to function, they feel comfortable because they're their own master. They're able to feed themselves. They're able to protect themselves. They're able to comfort themselves. And with TV to help them and perhaps some amusements, they're able to say that life is full because I'm there. But the whole plan of God says life is not full except you're there. I need somebody. God help us how ungodly we become. And the most ungodly thing that can happen, that we can say, I don't need the body of Christ. I don't need my mom. I don't need my dad. I don't need my brothers. I don't need my sisters. Give me some food to eat and give me a car to drive and give me some money in a charge account so I can go somewhere. And this is all I need. And give me somebody as a body that I can have sex with. And that's all that matters. No, it's a lie from the pit of hell. We are by necess necessity brought to the place where we have to be bonded to others. God, he ordains it, yea, he decrees it, he insists upon it that we cannot be an island, we cannot live to ourselves, we need others and we need to give to others. And if we don't, we are as ungodly as ungodly can be. There's a bonding that God has ordained in life. There's a bonding that we resent. Mothers resent the thought of being bonded to their children. And for a sum, we can hire somebody to take care of the children. And I know that it's something that can't be helped for some, where moms have had to work to be both mom and dad. And they've had to place their children in nurseries. And thank God for nurseries, it's better than empty bedrooms. But nurseries is not God's will. He hasn't chosen nurseries to be the place that your child is bonded to. He has chosen you. And if you've ever seen a child that's brought into a nursery, even into a church nursery, you understand how bonded the child is and how the child does not want to break the bond. And it's all right for times for children to be able, I suppose, to have a, an exercise of knowing other people. I'm not opposed to this. I don't believe that a wife, a mother has to be with a child 24 hours a day. 
and yet we're living in an hour for the first time in American history on a wholesale scale, we are finding moms who are no longer bonded to their children. Why? Because they're bonded to a paycheck. They're bonded to some finances. They're bonded to material things. And we all know that we have a hunger for material things. But remember, there's priorities in life. And priorities cannot be taken and manipulated. The first priority is God's will for our life. And God's will is that we be committed to people. We're committed to those around about. And a mother is to be bonded to her children. There's a bond there that's a bond of necessity. And yet now when it's a time for a divorce, the mother marries again and she says, you take half the kids or take them all because I'm not going to be stuck with them. I'm not going to be held down if you think you're going to go out and have a good time and leave me here locked into keeping these children. No way. I refuse to let it be my task. I refuse to let it be my burden. I refuse to let it be my prison. Why? Because we resent the thought of being bonded. But all of the work of God is a bonding. It begins when the child is born. The child is bonded to the mother. And the cord has to be severed as far as the physical so that there can be growth and development. But the spiritual bond continues and it cannot cease. It can only be that which is respected and embraced and recreated again and again. God has called us into a work of bonding. I think about a mother who looked at her little child and despised it. And she turned away from that child and refused to be bonded to it called me one night and said, I've got a little child that is demon-possessed. I loathe the child. I want nothing to do with the child. I'm an intelligent person. But since that child has been born, I have left that child in a room out of my sight. I've never held that child for any more time than I've had to. I've never shown that child any kindness. I place food in the room and the child takes the food and looks at me with a glare and throws it. The child does everything it can, just a little baby, to show its contempt for me. I'm sure that it is a demonic activity. 